Hey, so um, right now I want to read a little bit from a specific letter written by Carl Jung, Carl Jung, in 1915, so just over 100 years ago. Um, picked up this wonderful volume of uh, his letters, edition, or part one, 1906 to 1950. And I'm very happy because it's not an easy to book to find. You can't find it online for free anyway as a PDF, but it's, uh, I think uh, you can buy it as a rather pricey ebook, but you know, I like, I can't stand ebooks usually. So having a print copy is really much more night, much pleasurable, more pleasure. Wow. That's pretty bad. So, okay. This is, a this is a particularly interesting letter with a very fat footnote at the end of the first page. It's got two, two lines. Let me, let me show you this. Two lines of the letter. It's starting on the first page of the letter, followed by all of that as a footnote, followed by the letter continuing on the next page with more footnotes. This is a very strange letter um, and I'll read the footnotes to give the, a greater clarity on what makes it strange. There's also Greek words in this a little bit, so I might have to pause just for a moment. To Hans Schmid, Doc, 6, 6 November 1915. Dear friend, dot dot dot. In the meantime, and after long reflection, the problem of resistance to understanding has clarified itself to me. And it was Brigida of Sweden. Uh, end note, or footnote one. Brigida of Sweden, 1303 to 1373, who helped me gain insight. In a vision, she saw the devil who spoke of, with God and had the following to say about the psychology of devils. Their belly is so swollen because of their greed is boundless, for they fill themselves and were not sated. And so great was their greed that had they but being able to gain the whole world, they would gladly have exerted themselves and would moreover have desired to reign in heaven. A gr like greed is mine. Could I but win all the souls in heaven and on earth and in purgatory, I would gladly snatch them." End quote. The letter goes on, but I'm going to go back to the first page and read the footnote. This letter is handwritten. Hans Schmidt or Schmidt Gosen, MD, 1881 to 1932. Swiss psychotherapist, friend and pupil of Jung's, with whom he exchanged a lengthy correspondence, 1915 and 1916, on the question of types, more specifically, the latter, aban later abandoned, equation of thinking with introversion and feeling with extroversion. At the end of his foreword to Psychological Types in the Collected Works, Volume 6, page X, uh, 12, XII, Jung pays the following tribute to Schmidt. Quote, I owe a great deal of clarification to this to this interchange of ideas, and much of it, though of course in altered and greatly revised form, has gone into my book. The correspondence belongs essentially to the preparatory stage of the work, and its conclusion would create more confusion than clarity. Nevertheless, I owe it to the labors of my friend to express my thanks to him here." Unquote. The correspondence was brought to light again by Schmidt's daughter, Marie Jean, Jean uh, Bowler Schmidt, Jung's secretary from 1932 to 1952 in 1966. 
the editors of collected works, concurred with Jung's view that its inclusion as an appendix in collected works 6 would, quote unquote, would, quote, create more confusion than clarity, unquote, and held it to be too technical and prolix for inclusion in collected works, volume 18, a volume of miscellaneous and posthumous writings, some hitherto unpublished. The passage reproduced here forms a wholly unexpected personal codicil to Jung's long letter of 6 November uh, 1915, too valuable and moving to pass into oblivion. And it continues on into the next page, footnote section. Jung's obituary for Schmid in the Basler Nachrichten on uh, April 23rd, 1932, and his foreword to Schmidt's, um, Schmidt Gausen's Tag und Nacht, 1931, are in Collected Works, uh, Volume 18. It's a long footnote talking about how it's it's one of the more inter meaningful meaningful components of the actual interchange that ended up not being published so here we go having uh to Jung writing to Schmidt in referring to in the meantime after long clarification the problem of resistance to understanding has clarified itself to me and it was Brigida and then the quote about um greed Jung continues, so the devil is the devourer. Understanding equals comprehendere equals, then a, a Greek word that I'm not going to try pronouncing. And it, it is likewise a devouring. Understanding swallows you up. But one should not let oneself be swallowed up if one is not minded to play the hero's role unless it be that only really that one really is a hero who can overpower the monster from within and the understander in turn well that's i'm having a bad moment <laughs> and the understander in turn must be willing to play the role of the fafner and devour indigestible heroes it is therefore better not to quote, understand, unquote, people who might be heroes, because the same fate might befall oneself. One can be destroyed by them. In wanting to understand, ethical and human as it sounds, there lurks the devil's within, will, well, there lurks the devil's will, which, though not at first perceptible to me, is perceptible to the other, love to come in and comment on this right now. We'll come back at, after I finish. Understanding is a fearful, fearfully binding power. At times, a veritable murder of the soul, as soon as a murder of the soul, as soon as it flattens out vitally important differences. Again, I want to comment. <laughs> the core of the individual is a mystery of life, which is snuffed out when it is quote, grasped, unquote. That is why symbols want to be mysterious. They are not so merely because what is at the bottom of them cannot be clearly apprehended. The symbol wants to guard against Freudian interpretations, which are indeed such pseudo-truths that they never lack for effect. With our patient's, quote, analytical, unquote, understanding has, with our patients, analytical understanding has a wholesomely destructive effect, like a corrosive or thermocautery, but it is banefully destructive on sound tissue. It is a technique we have learnt from the devil, always destructive, but useful where destruction is necessary. But one cannot commit no greater mistake than to apply the principles of this technique to an ana 
analyzed psychology. More than that, all understanding in general, which is a conformity with general points of view, has the diabolical element in it and kills. It is a wrenching of another life out of its own, forcing it into a strange one in which it cannot live. Therefore, in the later stages of analysis, we must help people towards those hidden and unlockable symbols where the germ lies hidden like the tender seed in a hard shell. There should truly be no understanding in this regard, even if one were possible. But if understanding is general and manifestly possible, then the symbol is ripe for destruction, as it no longer conceals the seed which is about to break from the shell. I now understand a dream I once had which made a great impression on me. I was standing in my garden and had dug open a rich spring of water that gushed forth. Then I had to dig another deep hole where I collected all the water and conducted it back into the depths of the earth again. So is healing given to us in the unlocking and in, in the unlockable and ineffable symbol, for it prevents the devil from swallowing up the seed of life. The menacing and dangerous thing about analysis is that the individual is apparently understood. The devil eats his soul away, which, naked and exposed, robbed of its protecting shell, was born like a child into the light. That is the dragon, the murderer, that always threatens the newborn divine child. He must be hidden once more from the understanding of humanity. True understanding seems to be one which does not understand, yet lives and works. Once when Ludwig the Saint visited the holy Agidius Incognito, as, and as the two who did not know each other came face to face, they both fell to their knees before each other, embraced and kissed, and spoke no word to it together. Their gods recognized each other and their human parts followed. We must understand the divinity within us, but not the other, so far as he is able to go by himself and understand himself. The patient we must understand, for he needs the corrosive medicine. We should bless our blindness for the mysteries of the other. It shields us from devilish deeds of violence. We should be connivers at our own mysteries, but veil our eyes chastely before the mystery of the other, so far as, being unable to understand himself, he does not need the understanding of others. Unsigned. This is a very fantastic letter, and I, I really can't imagine, how, like, it's like playing devil's advocate in the most amazing sense. And I, I really, truly love being able to interpret um, alternative viewpoints and seeing why people think the way they do that is contrary to myself. And it, it updates me, but it, under, it allows me to understand um, the, hidden, the hidden voids between perspectives or one where one is feeling like the universe is within uh, to understand the other where the other, this this makes the argument to not understand the other when the other doesn't want to be understood or the under the other doesn't understand it his or her own self as much as one seeks to understand the other one <laughs> it's, it's a very hard thing to grasp with. Um, I brought this topic up in a discussion forum, and there was a, a response made that I wish I could recall for the sake of this, this video. Um, it was to do with um, individ individualism, and I, uh, anyway, that's a, an aside that I, since I can't remember, it's pointless to go into. However, um, the 
I'm going to go back to here, uh, the previous page here. The understander, in turn, must be willing to play the role of the Fafner and devour indigestible heroes. So, um, it is therefore better not to understand people who might be heroes, because the same fate might befall oneself. So for, like, I love that. People that are on a mission to make the world a better place may find themselves devoured by people that are seeking to flatten out and um, I want to say balance. It's a sort of balancing act. To understand is to make, well, he, Jung here writes very articulately that it's the flattening out of differences. One can, um, here, where is it? The flattening out of differences. Um, moreover, more than that, all understanding in general, which is a conformity with general points of view, has a diabolical element in it and kills. Yeah, kills the symbol. It seeks to kill the mystery. Wonder, fortunately, there is a lot of depth, and the symbol can be reborn after having died. It's like if a seed comes from the ground, and I, I don't know, I'm not good at this particular analogy. Uh, I want to say if the seed comes from the ground and grows into a tree, the seed dies, but then the the tree in its pure sense is understood by being excavated, ripped out by the roots. The plant is left to decay on the ground and is understood by having been the, the whole of its uh, angles and facets. All of roots are be, are exposed to sight and understanding and, and awareness, knowledge. And when it lays decaying and rotting on the ground, it yet then while still appearing to have uh, been understood and um, killed, as it says here, the diabolical element, which kills in, in the act of understanding, which is, you know, investigation, there is still uh, an underlying symbolic capability or possibility in the decaying nature. Um, if it's left to decay in the proper context, like, uh, if it, if a piece of uh, plant material like a tree has been left to decay, it'll provide nutrients to new growth. If it's removed and just thrown in the fire and burned, then it, I mean, uh, this is metaphorical, but it, it, you know, it provides heat, yes, but it doesn't provide any new nourishment for further growth. So... I'm going to continue on after that. The heroes, uh, one can be destroyed by them. One, like a hero, can be destroyed by. One can be destroyed by heroes that seek to understand. Now that's an interesting angle. Oh, I'm trying to think in specific contexts, but I don't think I should. In wanting to understand ethical and human, ethical and human as it sounds, there lurks the devil's will, which, though not at first perceptible to me, is perceptible to the other. I do think of current North American far left progressivism in, in these terms, being the seek here to understand and force understanding, which is ironic because a lot of people on the non far left not not participating in the yeah i don't even know how many different terms there are but i i i find that um there are heroes on both sides and to understand the here from the oppo from an opposing camp to try to understand the this as it's described here to understand the hero is is dangerous the understander can find him or herself destroyed. 
Hmm. This makes it... This, this whole letter itself is for a form of symbol. It's a, it's, uh, uh, <laughs> it begs further investigation. And honestly, I wish I could find the, the remains or the, the larger body of the correspondence. It might still be unpublished and yet maybe accessible if I, if I wrote to the, the estate or the management of Jung's unpublished writings. But just for this letter book, it's it's a perfect piece of, of writing that is. Well, I'm I'm creating this video just because I wanted something of Jung now, and this is the first time I've read something of Jung for this these videos that I'm creating, and to start with this, the seeking of understanding or the rationale for like an argument against understanding. It's it's quite um, open-ended, and I love it. Um, that's about it. <laughs>